Hi, in this quick video, let's go ahead and see what it would take to add a depth of field to our render in Maya. So for the sake of this example, I just created a plane with a bunch of spheres uh, on top of it. You can see in my outliner, there's nothing uh, fancy going on. Um, I just put, kind of randomly position them. And the only other thing uh, that I've done is I selected uh, all of my um, meshes and I assigned a Arnold uh, material, which is just a kind of a me metallic uh, metal uh, chrome material, right? The other thing that I've done is, um, let me turn the uh, lights on so you can see. I just added an HDR dome, so you can see that right here, it's just a dome lighting. Uh, with the HDR image from, I think it's from hdrhaven.com. And then you have the light underneath, which doesn't really serve much purpose, but I was trying to create like a little rim light effect. But as you can see, uh, there's not much uh, going on here. All right, so how do we render this out with a little depth of field effect? Well, um, just for the sake of uh, us focusing on this, let me turn off my lights so I don't have to look at that busy uh, background. And the very first thing you want to do when you render something out is obviously go to your uh, render settings, right? And under uh, common tab, you want to make sure that you have the render using, you know, in this uh, example, it's going to be Arnold uh, render, right? Um, I don't have a sequence of images. This is not an animation. This is not a short. I'm just going to do one still image. So I'm just going to leave it at single frame. If this wasn't an animation, I would want to switch it to one of these and that would give me a sequence. So like if I had, you know, an animation of 200, 300 frames, you want to use one of these. But for this example, I'm just going to stay with single frame. And the other thing I want to do is under image size, I'm going to uh, click on presets. I'm just going to use a HD 720. That's fine. Kind of a 16 by nine uh, render. The next thing I'm going to do, do is I'm going to jump into run, uh, Arnold Renderer and I'm going to crank these up just a little bit. So I set mine to four, four and three. It's still kind of low, but it's uh, enough to maybe give me a uh, nice uh, render. And the last thing you want to do is you want to click on each one of your lights that you added to your scene in the outliner. Make sure you click on each one and you wanna change your uh, samples. So in this case, uh, in this example, I switched it to four instead of like one by default. So four is good. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this light as well, right? So both of my lights are set sampling to four and that should give me a clean uh, render without being too pixelated. So let's go ahead and do a quick render and see what that looks like. All right, so this is really cool. Um, I can press play. When I press play uh, in my Arnold render view, if I spin my viewport, you can see that the render is gonna automatically update, which is really nice. All right, and now let's go ahead and jump into the purpose of this video is how do we render this out with maybe the center sphere uh, being uh, sharp, right? And then everybody else is kind of blurred out. So how do we do this? Well one of the things you're going to need is you're going to need to find the distance between the sphere and your camera lens so to do this what we need to do is we need to create a camera right now i'm using a perspective camera in maya that was given to me by default but if come if i'm going to do depth of field uh it's going to be a good idea i don't need to but it is a good idea to drop a camera in my own custom camera so i'm going to go to create cameras drop a camera in you can see a tiny little green thing is right there. I'm gonna scale this up a little bit so I can see it better. And what I'm gonna do now is just maybe drag it, you know, outside the plane, maybe get it into a better position, rotate it facing my scene. And obviously now what I wanna do is I wanna look through this camera onto my scene. So to do this, I'm gonna to go to panels, perspective. Let's choose camera one, cause that's the name of our camera. I can see that in the outliner, it's called camera one. Of course, I can double click and rename it if I needed to, if I have many different cameras. All right, now I'm gonna use the uh, middle mouse uh, scroll button to kind of zoom out. I can hold the old key and the left mouse button 
to um, rotate it, I can uh, hold down the Alt and click the middle mouse button to pan and just kind of get into, you know, align your shot to what it needs to be. Okay. Next you want to do is you want to select your selection tool and just simply select the object that you want to be in focus. So in this case, it's going to be this sphere. And now if I look at the distance from camera, which is located right here, it says 361 units, right? If you don't see this, go to display, heads up display, and you want to turn on uh, something called objects de details that will give you this information here, all right? So now, uh, now I know that this sphere is 361 units away from my camera lens, right? Which is uh, something I need to know. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on camera one and I'm going to go uh, down to uh, my Arnold uh, tab here. I'm gonna open up Arnold. And you do see something called depth of field. Uh, you need to ignore that because for the Arnold, uh, it's gonna have its own. And it's right in here, it's called DOF. So you wanna enable this. Once you enable this, you wanna change the focus distance to the number that was up here. Uh, honestly, I already forgot mine. So I can actually pin this down to make sure that this display doesn't go away. And then I can select my uh, sphere and I can see the number. So it's 361. So I'm going to go back to the, my focus distance and change this to three. Oops, 361. So that's we can do 0.15 as well if we wanted to. That's fine. All right. So now we've got the distance down. The next thing is the only other thing really you need to figure to, to control is this uh, aperture size. And that's going to be the amount of blurriness. Everything else is going to get um, in your scene, right? So in this case, just for the sake of this example, let's crank this up to like, I don't know, let's go to like 20. And now to see uh, what is happening, let's go ahead and, and click on our render. And let's give it a second to render out. All right, so there you go. Um, there's the effect um, being applied, right, of the depth of field. But one of the obvious things you're gonna quickly find out is it's still seemingly really low quality. It doesn't look uh, nice um, at all. So there's a few things that you could adjust to make this quality better. One of them is gonna be uh, let's go ahead and unpin this and kind of go over some of the settings. One of the things is you could change the samples of each of the lights. That's going to uh, give you a better result um, in, in your final render. Then, of course, you can go to your render settings. And in here, you can crank this up. And all of this is going to give you a better result. But the downside of that is going to require a lot more time to render. So, for example, if you are rendering an animation with two, 300 frames of animation, a few seconds, right? That's just gonna be a uh, super long time for you to uh, render your sequence. And that's, that's the downside of doing this. But there is a trick that I wanted to show you that is amazing. And the trick is um, applying a filter to uh, kind of sort this out instead of uh, cranking up your settings for your cameras or and your samples, right? So how do we do this? Well, if you go into the render settings and go to Arnold Render, you can go down to something called Imagers. So if you open this up and click on Add Imager, you have a few uh, really interesting things here, and you're welcome to play with each one. If you select them, you could see there's a few settings that come up, and uh, that will allow you to play around and give you you know, a different result. Uh, for the sake of this video, I don't want to play around with them. So what you could do is just add all three. It doesn't really add any rendering time, but it will apply kind of a filter to the end result of your rendering. So check this out. I just simply edited three of them and I'm just going to allow this to uh, render out and you can see the difference between what is happening um, before and after. So right now, you can see how pixelated all of this is. And let's just wait a second. All right, and here's the cinematic result uh, once the filters are applied. You can clearly see that it looks 
a lot more uh, polished, right? But it didn't really add uh, much more time to our rendering, right? So um, I think that's a really cool and important trick that you can uh, use in your uh, work, especially when it comes to animation. So uh, the only other thing I want to point out is when you're doing the run, uh, uh, when you're doing your rendering, make sure that the uh, camera is selected here as well, because you do have a couple different op options to jump between the perspective camera and your camera one, uh, which is the name again in your outliner. So keep that in mind if you're not seeing the correct uh, angle matching your, uh, your viewport, right? All right, so thanks so much for uh, watching. I hope you uh, found this useful and I'll see you in the next video.